So lately I've been thinking about reorienting my videos away from only building the bus, you know, and the workshop towards making the things that I want to make inside the workshop. Um, so that's what this is. Today I'm going to be baking a box. Uh, I'm going to be using some cedar and making it as simple as I can possibly make it, right? So in the future, as each week goes by, I want to complexify each item that I make. So the simplest part of this box is going to be these 45 degree angles that I'm going to be cutting. Uh, rather than putting flat on flat, using the 45s will hide those edges and just leave a nice tight little crease on each of the corners. So here, that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the table saw is adjusted to 45 degrees. table saw is a whole lot better than the miter saw. Um, I don't know why the miter saw is a little funky with these 45s. I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with it, but uh, that's what we're working with right now. There's six pieces. So obviously some wood glue. Maybe not enough, but spreading it around to, to cover more surface area. I'm not sure from the hardware store, this lumber uh, the cedar was finished only on one side. I don't know why they did that. I'm sure there's a reason, but uh, it was kind of inconvenient. And I messed up one of the boards. I cut the wrong side, which still isn't a big deal, but. So I mentioned that I'm gonna try to get better at carpentry, woodworking, eventually welding, and all kinds of making and stuff. But at the same time, I also want to get a lot better at filmmaking. So these videos are going to start off simple. And I, as each week goes by, I'd like to get a little better and implement something new every single week. Same thing with my woodworking and the product that I make. I want it to be a little bit better, a little bit more complex each week. Fast forward 20 weeks, you know, hopefully I'd be a lot better than I am now at both aspects. Now, because the miter saw kind of messed with me a little bit, it didn't cut perfectly. Uh, some of the edges are a little bit off. There's a little 16th inch gap here and there. But for the most part, it fits pretty well. I'm using that uh, the DeWalt uh, brad nailer just to kind of put some brad nails in there and hold the glue in place. Uh, I know I should be using one of those strap clamps, but I didn't have one. Also, as you can see, there's a lot that's, well, not a lot, but there is some stuff that still needs to be done on my bus. Like, as you can see in the back, you can see where those wires and the, the school bus logo is from the inside. So eventually I'll have to, have to cover all that up. But here, I'm using this Makita router to uh, route out those edges, give a nice little curved edge, a softer edge. Because this box actually will be used, if it wasn't going to be used, I probably wouldn't have routed the edges, but my mom, I'm going to give it to my mom. And first of all, those edges are actually pretty sharp, so you really could cut yourself on wood, you know, and the splinters are probably more likely. And second of all, um, with uh, such a sharp edge, it's going to be used, picked up, dropped, or whatnot. It's gonna dull out that sharp edge and it's gonna look pretty ugly. So, might as well beat the bullet and uh, go ahead and route the edges.
So this part, I had only just recently learned that when you do make a box, you don't make the bottom and the, and the lid separately. You make the entire box and then you run it through a table saw and cut the ratio that you want from top to bottom. Uh, I think I did an inch and a half, two inches for the lid, and I mean, that worked just fine. But somewhere along the line here, something shifted and I didn't notice. And you're about to see here, right there, the blade moved to the right about maybe a blade's width. And it's not a big deal, but I really didn't like that. I don't know what happened when I watched the video over. I still can't see what happened. It might just be something in the wood itself it might be a little off on one side or whatever. But there's the bottom and the top, uh, and I'm, I'm happy with how it came out for the first box. So here I'm marking out where the hinges are going to go. Because the hinge has has some width width to it, uh, it's gonna have to sit a little lower on the body of the box. So I'll cut a little gap for it so that the top and the bottom can sit flush with each other. Now I'm using my uh, coping saw which I just bought this. This thing is freaking awesome. I don't know why I liked it so much, but it was a pleasure to use. Uh, using my coping saw to go about an eighth inch, maybe three sixteenth into the wood, because that's about how wide the hinge is, or thick rather. using a chisel to kind of get all that meat out of there. Um, there's different ways to do this, but I think the chisel is the best. Uh, it's the most precise way, the least. I mean, you really ain't gonna mess this up unless you just go wild with it, but I personally think this is the best way to do it. the back where the bolt is is still a little bit too thick so I'm gonna just kind of take out a little bit more from the back not from the front though um, and it should fit real nice sand this guy I'm using a uh, I think it was 120 grit first and then afterwards I used a 400 grit just because those were the two that I had um, I should probably diversify my sanding collection but until then this worked out just fine and while I'm sanding I can kind of get a closer look at the, the gaps between the edges kind of plan out what I'm going to do there. Probably going to put some putty on there. I say that because I have already put the putty. added now I've switched to a uh, 400 grit there's my sister she came to help she's great I love when she comes to help 
So to stain this thing, I'm going to use some uh, polyurethane. Uh, this is probably the first, this is the first stain I've used and I really liked it. It's been about 24 hours now as I'm making this recording and the box itself is uh, like the outside doesn't feel sticky at all. It just feels a part of the wood. So I'm pretty happy with this stain. In the future, I'll kind of get into some linseed oil uh, and other kinds of oils and water-based stuff. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but or the, the practical difference. Um, but the more things I make, the more diverse my collection of consumables is gonna be. So, till then. So now, just attaching the hinges, you know, it's kind of winding down, this is the last couple steps. Um, the little divots, or whatever you call them, that I cut for them, were the perfect size. Um, now I'm just kind of lining it up as straight as I can. So I'm getting my sister to help me kind of hold it up there so I can screw it on both sides with a little spacer in the middle. That just turned out to be like the perfect spacing. That was just real lucky. Well, I don't know about lucky, but good fortune. I suck when I'm in a rush. What 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter? I have my fucking shits as bad. <laughs> what the fuck have I done, bro? See, just as I say that, just as I say don't get into a rush, immediately I screw up. I put the, the top of that lock piece horizontal rather than vertical. I hate being in a rush, man. but it's fixed. So now, just the handles are left. We got ourselves a box. Yeah, as you can see right on the top and on the right side, there's parts of the uh, putty that I didn't sand enough, but I didn't see that I didn't sand it enough until I put the stain on, which obviously you can't sand it once the stain is on there. But you live and you learn. Okay, I'll, I'll pay more attention to that next time. And there it is. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, leave me a comment, give me some advice. Also, you've already watched the first video and it's only gonna get better from here. So you might as well subscribe, right? Thanks for watching.